you know, Argy Bajie crew, I hope you're having a fantastic day today and your family's happy and healthy. Let's take a look at the Schmitz Cargo Ball Trailer Pack, latest DLC from SCS for Hero Truck Simulator 2. It has, has quite a few different uh, trailers in it. What we'll do is I'll let you know what they are. This is what they include, or it includes, is the Schmitz Cargo Ball S.CS Universal, the S.CS Ecofix, the S.KO Cool, the S.BO Express, the S.KI Solid, and the S.KI Light. And you also get cabin accessories. You get the SKO Light Trailer Miniature. You get the Schmitz Cargo Ball Lunchbox. You get the Schmitz Cargo Ball Elephant Plush Toy. You get the Schmitz Cargo Ball Cap and the Schmitz Cargo Ball Mug. So what we'll do now is we'll pop into the game itself and have a look there. So what I've done is I've opened up the Trailer Explorer. For people that don't know how to get to this, uh, I'll show you exactly how to do it. So from the uh, main menu, you would go to Catalog and then Trailer Explorer. And in Trailer Explorer, you just click on the trailer model. Choose any of the models that you want here. I'm just going to go here and choose the Schmitz Cargo Bull DLC. And we'll take a look at them. So this is the S.BO trailer that you're looking at now. And they've done a good job on it because it's uh, quite detailed. As they always do, they, they do a great job on their DLCs. And as you can see, it's quite detailed, like I say. Now, as for um, chain type, it's just a single in this form. And then body type, again, it's only the one body type on that one here. But as far as your uh, chassis goes, you've got three different types. Let's pan out a little bit so we can fit this all in. And that way you can have a better look at it. Okay, so you've got the twin axle. You've got the three axle, which we just looked at. And then you had the three axle long. So that's just the longer version of the trailer itself. And as far as your paint jobs go, it will accept any of the paint jobs from your DLCs and probably from some of your modded trucks as well. As you can see there, it accepts them all. As far as customization goes and accessories, it's got the standard uh, accessories of most trailers. You've got your uh, chassis front. You can change to uh, many different things. I'm not going to go through them all. I'll leave that up to you guys if you uh, so choose. You can got markers there. And back here, you've got your rear fenders. Three different types to choose from, the square, round, and then your standard. And down here, you've got chassis rear, et cetera, et cetera. And like I say, I'm not going to go through them all because, uh, well, actually, that's a, is that a clear one. Oh, no, that's just the reflection. <laughs> Uh, long vehicle, extra long, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, quite uh, quite a nice looking trailer. Okay, so now let's take a look at the S.CS. And this is it here. It has two different chain types. It has the single that you're looking at now. And then it has the double. Dun, dun, dun which is, instead of using a dolly, it just uses a solid, uh, uh, like a B-double. But uh, instead of having a smaller trailer at front, it's a smaller trailer at back. So you get, again, like I say, you get the single, or you get the double in that version. Then in the body type, you get two different types of bodies. Let's go back to the single so we can see. See it a bit better. Down at the front here. So you get the Ecofix, which we discussed as one of the versions. Ecofix Paint. Uh, then the Universal and the Universal Paint. And again, with this, you've got quite a few different chassis types. You've got the twin, the three axle. Three axle steerable spread and the three axle long. 
And again, with the paint jobs, it accepts any of the paint jobs that you uh, might have. And accessories, again, the standard run-of-the-mill accessories, which is still quite a good amount of accessories. Let's have a quick look at uh, the uh, rear bumper, what sort of versions we got. Exclusive, standard, standard. So you've got two different standard types, paint and exclusive. Now, the next one is the S.KI. Now, this is quite a nice looking trailer, this. This is for your grains and rocks and just like a tipper. But you can have grains in it as well. Use it as a grain uh, trailer. Chain type is just a single with this, but you've got quite a few different body types. So you've got the solid, which you're looking at now. And then you have the solid sliding cover. As you can see, it's got the uh, bulbous cover on top. That's normally used for, well, that's used for grains and stuff like that. Then you've got the SKI light. And I'll show you the difference between the solid and the light. So you get a better idea. That's the solid. That's the light. Go around the back and have a look. Uh, solid, light, and then you have the light with sliding cover. Then you have quite a few different axles as well, or chassis. So you've got the twin axle, which is uh, mainly for the shorter trailers. And you have the tw twin axle, sorry, you have the twin axle with just your standard uh, legs, twin axle with your uh, aluminium legs, three axles, three axles. Oh, okay, so that's the three axle long and your three axle short, then the three axle with the aluminium legs and the three axle long with aluminium legs. So as you can see, there's quite a few different variations of the trails. And again, same with your paint jobs. It will accept basically any of your paint jobs. And as far as accessories go, again, your standard run of the mill accessories for the all, all the SES trailers. So, yeah, as you can see, there's quite a few good uh, variations on that trailer. And then we've got the S.KO, all right, which is basically a cooler refrigerated trailer. And you have the single chain type or the double, again, just like you did with the other one. And again, with the solid uh, connection instead of uh, a dolly, which makes it a lot easier to manoeuvre. Body type, it's just that, well, actually, let's have a quick look at, I think the body types might be different from the single. No, they're the same. Okay, so there's only one body type, whether it's double or single. Then you have the axles. Now, there will be different axles with the longer ones, but with the, uh, with the double. But with the short or the standard version, these are the axles that you get. So the long, standard, and the twin. And then if we change the chain type, this and have a look at the axles that you get, you get to the one standard three by two axle with that. And again, like I say, with paint jobs, it accepts all the paint jobs, and they've done a good job on these. And again, with your standard uh, accessories of most trailers that you'll see. So that's the uh, Schmidt's Cargo Ball trailer pack. Now what we'll do is we'll go and get a quick job. Actually, what I'll do is this. We'll go to the trailer manager. And what trailer will we try? Let's go with one of the, um, this one here, the sliding cover. Configure it. Oh, it's already on the truck. Okay. Well, what we'll do is this. Get out of here. Go for a drive and go to a service center, unless we're already at the service center. I can't remember where I left the truck with this one. Let's find out. No, we're not at a service center. We're at a drop-off. But what we'll do is this. Go to a service center. We'll set it all up so that it's... Uh, Ready to rock and roll. Didn't want that. <laughs> Too quick on the button. Okay. 
Let's change the paint job to match truck. First thing. Which one is it? It's not that one. It's that one. Oh, look at that. Pretty flash. Okay, and what about body type? Let's go the sliding cover. Solid. Go the light. And axles. Yeah, we'll stick with the one we've got. Excellent. Okay, now we'll go get a job. Oops, and do that. All right, now let's get a job. Lovely weather for it. What time of day is it? Yeah, that's okay. All right, we'll go for cargo. Get a local job. And as you can see, like I say, you can do grain or whatever. Basically, there's quite a few different loads that you get with these trailers. Uh, wood shavings, scrap metals, etc. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's see how long the job that is. That one will do, I say. I say, I say, I say. All right. Set the GPS. Jump in the truck. Check that my uh, head tracking is working, which it is. Excellent. All right. Ready to roll. Uh, switch our lights on so we don't get fined for that. And, whoops. Turn the wheel cam on so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going over to the right. Oh, a little mini. Whoa, miss that. At the roundabout, take the second page. I like the fact that it um, accepts most of your paint jobs. So yeah, let's have another quick look while we're at the red lights, so you can get a better idea of it. So I don't know if you have been following my videos, but um, if you have, you probably know that I've moved into a new house and there's been a few little sagas with it. Um, it's a nice big house. The bones of the house are really strong. It's a, a good place, but it's got a few little idiosyncrasies. Like there's a massive big living room out the back with a bedroom attached to it on the back section of the house but the problem with that is the roof leaks like I said it was supposed to have been repaired uh, before we moved in uh, but that didn't happen so we were a little bit peeved with that and then two weeks after we moved in the owners put the house up for sale now We've been guaranteed that because we've signed a lease that they're not going to throw us out, or at least not while the lease is in uh, action. And the, but the reason we actually had to move out of the last place we were in 
is because the owners were selling the house because we're not rich we can't afford to buy a house we can only rent we had to find another place because they wanted to sell their house and therefore we move into this place wanting to get a long lease and then like I say two weeks after we're told that they're selling the place they put it up for sale but here's, here's the kicker they put it up for sale drove this for sale sign in on the front lawn and within one day it sold I'm not joking it sold in one day for just over half a million dollars uh, and apparently it was to an investor from over east and they're looking for long term renters so we should be okay but the one thing we're worried about is that the old owners had said that uh, they were definitely getting the roof replaced, the whole roof at the back replaced at a cost of about $10,000. So they guaranteed that that would happen. We've spoken to the roof guys since and they said yes, they've still got the order in for it. But we're worried that now that somebody else owns the property, that um, that may not happen. So we're going to keep our fingers Let's crossed and hope and pray that we get the roof replaced. So that's the saga of that. Uh, a bit stressful. And then on top of that, the main roof, part of the awning on the main roof, at about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, on a Saturday, um, fell off. Made a hell of a bang. And therefore... Oops. Um scared the bejesus out of us Turn right. oh that was close <laughs> and yeah so then we had to get another roof guy in Turn left. to repair the um i don't know what you call it it's like a piece that goes um under the or on top of the eaves on both sides of the house the one that fell off and then the one on the other side which was just about to fall off so we had to wait for him to repair that which he did just yesterday so and then because the place um, has sold we've had valuers come in from the bank because I wanted to check if it was truly at the value it was so we had a building inspector come in and he pointed out that if you look inside the vanity in the bathroom which we had been doing because we've been using the bathroom um, there's a, a little how could I call it piece of wood that sat on the bottom that looked like the bottom of the actual vanity but if you move it it was covering a hole where the vanity bottom was completely rotten and was exposing the ground underneath <laughs> so there's another problem <laughs> so that's got to be replaced okay let's take another look outside see what you think now yeah, I'm loving these little trailers I think they're great keep right and then now I'm speeding right. So yeah, that's the saga of the house, but I'm loving the house because it's a great big house. Right. And like I said, the actual bones of the house are, are good. Even the um, building inspector said the little things that have gone, well, the things that have gone wrong with it, even though they're not really little, are, are minor and really just cosmetic apart from the roof at the back. And uh, like I say, he did a full inspection on the on the house and said yeah you've got no problems it's in good structural condition so fingers crossed that will be the last of our little problems and uh, we should be happy for at least the next 12 months and hope that they um, 
hope that they renew our lease and let us stay here for quite some time because we really do want to stay here long term because it's, it's worked out good like I say I've got this studio where I can do my videos now it's completely separate to the rest of the house so I don't have people walking in on me while I'm doing videos or walking behind me because I used to make my videos in my lounge room while people were watching TV people knocking on the door deliveries and yeah it made it quite difficult but uh, the way it is now it's really works out well so hopefully again like I say please people keep your fingers crossed for us that uh, we'll be alright in the place we're in now oh and a uh, little bit of news on live streaming I was talking in other videos about doing some live streams on YouTube I'm having a few problems setting it up through OBS uh, so if anybody knows how to set up uh, live streaming through OBS I mean I've, I've got it all connected to YouTube it's just that um, the streaming itself turn those wipers off the streaming itself um, can be a little bit skippy or the sound can be a bit stuttery and I think I've worked it out and I'm going to do a live stream sometime within the next week as a test um, in two minds of whether I'd make it public or private but let me know in the comments what you think whether I should do it public or private and just test it first before I go live or go public um, because I, yeah I'd really like to get some uh, live streams happening so I can talk to you directly guys well in in real time if you know what I mean and the other thing too is I just recently did a in fact the last video I did was like a preview review of 14 different titles that are coming up um, <clears throat> uh, simulators and driving and transport simulators uh, in the next year or two that I think uh, look quite interesting and that you might might have been interested in the problem with that, doing those types of videos though is I get hit with copyright infringement or copyright um, strikes from YouTube because the developers when they make the trailers are using copyrighted, well not all the developers and not all the trailers but quite a few of them Keep right. they're using copyrighted music and you'd think if they wanted guys like us, us creators here on YouTube to promote their uh, games and that that they would uh, make the trailers right. with uncopyrighted music so that uh, we don't have to replace the music so I, I, it took me nearly four days to um, do that video because of the simple fact that um, I had to fiddle around with all the different trailers and uh, edit them and pe left. piece them together splice them together and whatnot. and then once I'd done that and uploaded it um, I got hit with a copyright strike so I uh, had to then remove that music and replace it with my own uh, re-upload which I did and then I got hit with another copyright strike from a different part of the video from a different trailer, one of the trailers that was on there and that's the other thing, I don't know why YouTube just doesn't go through the lot and hit you with copyright strikes for each one rather than wait until you have to re-upload it so anyway, a long story short, I had to re-upload it three times changing the uh, music then I realized that <laughs> you could actually do it in YouTube so then again I get hit with another copyright strike and what happens but when that happens is I get demonetized so I can't make any money out of the videos and I make very little money out of these videos believe me I make extremely poor money out of them but I still like making something out of it because it helps me uh, maintain the channel it helps me if I want to buy a game and review it or whatever I can sort of use that to put towards buying a game and Go and, on. and hopefully uh, keep making the videos but anyway so 
then I got hit with another copyright strike. So, it, like I say, it took me about four days in total to actually upload and complete that. And I'm still worried that I might get hit with another copyright strike. And then I get demonetized again. So, again, guys, cross your fingers for that one. That it doesn't happen. Because, uh, like I say, it's uh, getting boring now. Every uh, day, I'm, well, every half an hour, I'm getting hit with a copyright strike from that video. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. What I might do is if I keep getting hit with copyright strikes, I might just demonetize that video by itself and just hope that uh, I make more money out of other videos. Oh, that's the other thing too. Um, I'm going to be doing... And I keep mentioning this, and I haven't done it yet, but it's been course of what's been happening with the house and with that particular video. I haven't had much time. We'll be doing a review on a controller, a gamepad, that I recently bought to replace uh, my old uh, yeah, Nacon controller, which I'd had for about four or five years. Cost me, that controller, the Nacon, cost me around about $300. It wasn't cheap, and uh, the one I found was quite inexpensive and better than the Nacon, which is very unusual. It actually has all sensors in it. If you know anything about gang pads, the traditional sensors that are in it, uh, like a friction-based sensor that rub against um, themselves and eventually they wear out and that's what happened to the Nacon it uh, eventually got to the point where I couldn't use it because the actual trigger the right trigger um, had worn out to the point where it was constantly going off automatically by itself no matter how much cleaning or readjusting that I did would fix it it would just go off by itself and this controller because it's actually a hall sensor doesn't have that problem it doesn't wear out because it uses magnets but anyway, I'll show you that in the That's review when I do it. So just letting you know that that review is coming. Exit now. So if you, you're looking for a gamepad, stay tuned. Uh, the reason it's taken me so long, like I said, is because I've had so much other stuff that I've had to do, but also because I'm trying to work out a way to set up a camera so I can... Um, actually film the, the controller and show it to you but I'll work something out Drop-off's just up here, so we haven't got far to go. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. Go 
goes straight on. I always do that, I either pull up too short or I go too far. <laughs> Alright, so that um, was the first job using one of those trailers. And how do we do? 207 kilometres, 3 hours, 42 minutes, 107.8 litres of fuel used, and we made 6,527 euros. Thank you very much. And it was excellent. Okay. So let's take another look at that. And get things to work. Hop out. Yeah, so that's one of the trailers there. For the Schmitz Cargo Bull Trailer Pack. I highly recommend it. I mean, in Australian dollars, it's only five bucks. Six, just under six bucks. So well worth the money. You get quite a few different variations of trailers and uh, like I say they accept all your paint jobs so they look apart uh, got accessories that you can change I uh, highly recommend it all right so yeah if you did enjoy the video guys give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down so I know what I'm doing is good or bad also uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do that it's free you might as well it helps me out with the logarithm and uh, YouTube likes it. We'll, uh, hopefully, if you did enjoy it, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.